Hello. Um, thank you so much for being interested in helping people that I know to rebuild their homes. Um, as you may know, I live in Bega and um, on New Year's Eve and on the Saturday the 4th, I think, there was a, a lot of big active fires in my region and a number of people that I know personally and also are friends of friends have lost their home and um, I have been watching you know some media <laughs> and I realized that doing that and being disconnected from the process of being in the community is can feel really disempowering and um, I have been feeling really impotent and like what can I do to help like obviously if you're here you would do anything you, c you can to help anybody who's here and um, a few friends have got GoFundMe campaigns so this GoFundMe is a website platform and they facilitate people to make donations to you you basically just um, can log in and create an account where you receive donations on the premise that you're going to use that money for a specified purpose um, so for that reason I'm only going to be sharing links of people that I know personally or that have been recommended to me from a trusted friend and these are just actual people who I know who don't have insurance um, and who don't have a home right now and they don't have any savings or any means to rebuild their home so um, I appreciate what the Red Cross and RFS and that other bodies are taking donations I think that's really beautiful um, I just know that the way my mind works I just want to give the money to the person who doesn't have the house I don't want to muck around with agencies I don't want to wonder what my money's getting spent on these guys don't have a house they'd like to have a house so for me it's a no-brainer um, so go ahead and if you have any funds I'm sure any of these people would appreciate it every little bit helps even if you can only donate five dollars or ten dollars it all adds up um, and just a little bit about what's happened for me because maybe you're wondering um, if I've been impacted no like I live in Bega and um, the evacuation center is in Bega so Bega is a very play, uh, safe place to be um, there's a lot of grass and farmlands in and around Bega um, there are mountains you know like I have seen the fire from my veranda because there are mountains near to my home but um, yeah I mean if I needed to I would totally stay in Bega I chose to leave Bega on Friday the 3rd um, because New Year's Eve day was very smoky um, there was a lot of people in my house that had evacuated their house from nearby um, that was great I was really happy to be helpful um, and to create a space where people could come and be safe so that was like the ultimate for me we had a beautiful day supporting each other and the kids were just playing happily all day and were a little bit oblivious we were indoors my house is pretty big um, but after that when I saw that the forecast was going to be really hot with potentially with northerly winds um, I just decided to go to Canberra I'd been meaning to go to Canberra anyway to visit my sister and at that point um, Canberra looked to me like a, a safer option um, the air quality had been touted in the media as being you know the worst air quality of any capital city in the world and that is probably true and I guess what I've noticed through this whole process is that when you're disconnected from the process that the media is reporting on it's easy to kind of misunderstand things I mean definitely Canberra's air wasn't great but it definitely wasn't anything like being in Bega um, so I was really happy with the choice to go to Canberra and luckily my sister-in-law was on a holiday so her house was free so massive thank you to um, to her for letting me stay in her place I stayed there with another friend and her kids and we just basically on the hot day we just bunkered down and um, what I did realize though on my way up the hill was you know like we stopped in Kuman I wasn't even where I needed to be yet but just already I just didn't have that layer of preoccupation with the fire where's the fire how close is it like how soon is someone going to come around and knock on my door and tell me that I need to go do I need to go should I stay should I go so it's just kind of this 
layer of um, internal dialogue that's going on and everyone you know every conversation is about that and it's totally on my mind all the time um, but even once I got to Kuma I just felt like <sighs> like this layer of not being stressed about that and feeling like my little mammals are secure um, so even though I wasn't in danger it was good for me to just get away and see oh there is this layer of stress that occurs when you're in the vicinity to the fire and um, it was good to get away from that and have a break and to decide how I want to re-enter this space who, how do I want to show up in this space um, how much media can I watch how many other people's feeds can I watch on social media what's the most like what's the biggest priority among all of that so um, we were there for a few days and today the 7th of January I've come home I have a little headspace and I just really want to share these because I know that I have a little bit of reach um, there's a few people I know on Facebook who might be eager to help and want a trustworthy source that is really impactful for people who need that help so um, thank you if you wanted to hear what's happening for me that's the story you know we've done all the things we've cleaned the gutters we've got water everywhere it did rain yesterday which is fabulous it is still really smoky um, as we drove down from Canberra, you can't see the mountains. But, I mean, ultimately, Bega is a good place to be. There's lots of safe buildings. And um, a massive thank you to anyone who's thinking of donating. I think I'll stop. Um, feel free to message me. If you do need somewhere to stay in Bega, my house is totally an option for a shower or a cuppa or anything. So I hope you're safe and having a beautiful day. And I look forward to seeing you soon.